Hi, this is Quinlan. A lot of people have been asking me what sort of hiking gear they should bring with them on their trip to Japan if they wanted to do some hiking as part of a larger trip. Some people may already have hiking gear and are just curious what I think are the most necessary bits to bring. Um, some of you may not have hiking gear at all and you want to know what you should get in your home country where it's uh, easier to figure out what you need and easier to just buy. This video will deal with what you would want to bring with you for hikes from early summer through mid-fall. Spring hiking tends to involve snow up in the mountains and late fall through winter is a whole different ball game and so I'm just not gonna address that in this video to keep things simple. I'm gonna divide this into two parts, what you wear and then what you have in your backpack. All hiking brands make this sort of shirt. I happen to live in Japan and so Mont Bell is the cheapest option for me, but any hiking brand is gonna be fine. I like these collared shirts that they make um, because they're good for wearing around town. They're also incredibly quick drying. They have SPF protection and uh, they're easy to wash. If you're in a pinch, you can wash them um, in the shower, um, in a hostel or wherever and uh, just hang up and they dry off really quickly. So uh, I like the long sleeve ones because in a lot of cases, um, it's better to have something long sleeve to give you a little bit of protection, whether it's from bugs or branches or whatnot. And you can always roll up your sleeves if you're a little warm. So I like these. I also like having actual hiking pants. So, <laughs> I don't know if that shows you, but I, I actually buy um, lightweight um, hiking pants that are, these are the same sort of summer and fall hiking pants that are um, quick drying, they are SPF resistant, they give you a little bit more um, abrasion protection than normal street pants, they're durable, and I also wear them around town. It's like I uh, dress this way normally too recently. I just uh, am so used to wearing these pants. In addition to the hiking shirt and pants, of course, you're going to want um, good hiking shoes or boots. Whether you're gonna wear trail running shoes, hiking shoes um, that are low, like I'm wearing today, or if you wanna wear um, full on hiking boots, um, you're gonna need one of the two of those. I think for most hikes, you can get away with shoes. And the thing about these hiking shoes or trail running shoes is that they look fine for wearing around town. If you just wanna have them be your shoes for your trip to Japan, I think that would work just fine. One thing that I overlooked initially that I think a lot of people might is socks. I also really recommend buying actual hiking socks, which are the nice wool kind. They are just much nicer on your feet and uh, they save your feet from a lot of wear and tear. And uh, while expensive, they last. There's a couple of things I would call optional. Um, one of them would then be obviously bear spray, which I always uh, carry with me. And I have this little thing that I bought separately and a little, um, yeah, it's basically just Germanic pepper spray. A lot of people like the bigger kind, but the smaller kind is fine. I've never had to use it in the uh, couple years that I've had it, and I've talked to a number of mountain guides who all carry it, and none of them have actually used it either. So I think it's really just a get struck by lightning sort of situation, just for your own peace of mind sort of thing. So there's that. Another thing is uh, hiking poles. I don't use hiking poles, but some people carry one or two hiking poles. And maybe if you have uh, weak knees or um, get really uh, um, pain on the way down a mountain, it might make sense to use poles when you're descending to take some of the pressure off your knees. Another optional piece of gear is gaiters. Now I wear them if I know I'm going somewhere really muddy or really gravelly. If I'm wearing the low top shoes like I am today, then I'll wear it when I'm going somewhere that's got a lot of volcanic gravel. And they just attach to the bottom of your shoes, to the front of your shoes, and um, sort of along your ankles are a little bit higher. And they just keep uh, mud off the bottom of your pants and they keep uh, stuff from getting in your shoes. And you can wear them whether you're wearing boots or shoes. And some go all the way up to your knees, others just go up a little farther, depends on the weather season, I'd say they're optional. Two other things that I would put in the optional but recommended category are a hat, which um, will give you, a, you know, of course, uh, sun protection. I'm not wearing one today because this is a really late afternoon hike and the sun is already pretty much down. Um, but uh, I generally wear a hat during the day. I, uh, you don't see me wearing a hat for a lot of the uh, videos I make because I take it off before I film just because it, it shadows my face and it, it just looks better in the film if I don't wear a hat, but I do 
wear one when I hike and I recommend it most of the time. And of course, sunglasses. Um, today again, I didn't need it because it's late, but generally speaking, it's good to have a pair with you because um, yeah, it's really, uh, can be too bright. And uh, it's, it's just good for you to, obviously, I don't need to tell you why I need sunglasses. Bring sunglasses. Okay, then the next thing is what you're gonna wanna bring with you in your pack. And so let me just show you the things that I usually bring in my pack. So first, in terms of uh, food and water, you're gonna obviously wanna bring plenty of water. And um, I recommend bringing more water or drinks, energy drinks, whatever, than you need. Um, it's also, I prefer not to use plastic when I can avoid it. Um, in Japan, uh, the plastic bottles, pet bottles as they call them, are everywhere and it's hard to avoid them. But if you can, of course, a canteen or two and keeping them refilled is ideal. Um, for a full day hike, I'd bring two or three liters. I bring too much. Um, that's maybe a different topic that we can discuss the amount of water. But for now, yeah, of course, fluids. In addition to that, I also like to bring these uh, sort of um, I don't know, gels, I guess you'd call them. These refill your electrolytes, some vitamins, minerals, and they help you avoid getting sort of muscle pains and making you miserable the day after a hike. I find these to be really effective. They sell them in every convenience store and supermarket, a lot of different varieties. I recommend these. Um, I also generally have Calorie Mate. Um, these are just sort of emergency rations. I don't eat these, generally speaking. I just have them with me in case, and you can sell this box as beaten up. I've had this with me for a few weeks. Every month or so I eat them just to keep them fresh. Um, but uh, generally speaking, I just have this in case something happens and I need extra rations. I have some of these with me. I also like to bring uh, protein bars. Um, Japanese protein bars, you can buy them at convenience stores, anything like that. And they're um, a lot of different varieties, brands. Yeah, you know what they are. They're good. I also um, recommend getting uh, sort of salt sugar tablets. This this is like a salt tablet because just an energy drink like Aquarius or um, Pokery Sweat, which you can get in Japan, don't have quite as much sweat. Um, <laughs> listen to me. Energy drinks like Pokery and Aquarius don't have as much salt as you sweat out. And so it's sometimes good to have these little slightly sweet, salty candies with you. I have a few in my pocket that you can just um, get the salt back that your body needs. Because if you're just drinking water, you can still have um, you know, heat stroke and problems like that if you're not getting the salt replaced in your body. I also bring a little first aid kit. Um, there's a number of different uh, first aid kits that they sell all over the place. If you go to any hiking outfitting shop, you can get one that has the things you need. I'm not gonna get into all the stuff in the first aid kit at this point. Another thing you always wanna bring is a headlamp. Um, I like having the kind that you can recharge with a micro USB port like this one. Uh, you always wanna check it, make sure it's got a charge before you go on a hike. And I also have an extra battery pack that can recharge any USB device. And so um, if it were even to run out on a hike, I'd be able to charge it and use it while I was charging it. You know, these little um, sort of aluminum foil um, emergency sheets. Um, these will really help keep you warm and I always have this with me. Um, never had to use it, but if you ever needed to shelter for a long period of time, even in the summertime, it can get surprisingly cold at night in some higher locations, so it makes sense to have that with you. In my case, I also have WAFA, or um, Wilderness Advanced First Aid Certification. So I carry this little um, waterproof handbook with me that has um, different stuff that I need if I run into someone who's in trouble. And um, I also have uh, gloves and um, something for doing uh, mouth to mouth um, resuscitation with me as well. Also in the summertime, it always makes sense to have a uh, warm thing. Like it is actually getting sort of cold here because I'm just sitting and it's late afternoon. I'm gonna have to get down off this mountain quick. It's um, after 4 p.m. I can get down off this mountain in about 40 minutes, but still don't want to push it too close to the mark here. In addition to this soft warm shell, I also have a windbreaker raincoat um, that I could uh, pull out and put on were it to suddenly rain or were it to get really cold. Even if it's not raining, this is good just to really keep your heat in. And it also is really compact. And so I think it makes sense to have two extra layers with you at all time that you should just bring from your home country. One to add a little bit of warmth and then another to seal that warmth in, a hard external shell. And in the summertime, a raincoat windbreaker will do for that.
One other thing that all Japanese hikers bring, and that I do too, is a little towel. Now this is the same sort of towel that you would use at a hot springs that you bring in with you, because you have the big towel that you leave in the changing room and this little towel that you bring in with you. This is from uh, Guma. This is a hot springs towel from Guma. Anyways, this, a lot of Japanese people just have this around their neck when they're hiking. It's, you know, it's useful for wiping sweat and stuff. You can also tie it around your head or just have it handy. Um, as uh, Douglas Adams always told us, you wanna always carry a towel, right? Two things that I recommend bringing, but I have to admit that I'm guilty of often neglecting to bring myself, are a map and a compass. I generally hike mountains that I've hiked multiple times before, have great signage, and so I don't often do that myself. But if you're hiking somewhere you're unfamiliar with, then it really makes sense to print out a map, which you can do from the Yamap app that you can download in your Android or uh, iOS whatever store. And it makes sense to print out your route and then to have one of those compasses, you know the kind, that has a transparent rectangular base that you can set on top of the map and use for map reading really well. I have one of them, I just, yeah, I don't have it with me today to show you, but it is a best practice to always have that with you. Generally speaking, your GPS-enabled smartphone has excellent map, excellent compass functioning, but there are always the cases where something will happen to your smartphone, um, whether it's too cold or if it's not perfectly waterproof or you miscalculated the batteries and you can't recharge, it. you know the scenarios. Basically, if you're going somewhere you're not familiar, it makes sense to have a paper map and a compass just in case. I think that is enough for most casual day hikes. And of course, in addition to that, you wanna bring the food that you plan to actually eat, your lunch, whether that's some rice balls, some onigiri or a sandwich or whatever else. Um, bring what you're gonna eat, those emergency rations, the protein bars, everything like that, and then what I've just showed you. And I think for most one or two day hikes, that's fine. Now up here in the mountains of Tohoku, most of the lodges are what's called uh, hinangoya or emergency huts. And they generally have nothing in them except a bathroom. And so when you wanna spend the night, that's a whole nother list of gear, um, which I'll get into in a different video. Um, but for people who are hiking in the Northern or Southern Alps in the Nagano area, they have lodges that you pay, like could be like 75 to hundred dollars to stay in, I think. And they have like meal service, they sell things. It's like amazing. And so you would need less if you're going there. For a lot of the lodges here, if you're going on a multi-day hike, you're gonna have to bring all the food and water for multiple days, just like if you were camping in the wild, more or less. I hope this gave you an idea of what things you might wanna bring with you if you wanna go hiking in Japan. Um, feel free to ask uh, any questions in the comments that you may have, and uh, let me know uh, what you bring when you go hiking. I know that um, this, what I have here is uh, rather incomplete. This is just what I bring. This is by no means an exhausted list. This is just what I found useful to me hiking in Northern Japan here over the last uh, three or four years that I've been hiking regularly. And I know that depending on the landscape and the mountains, you may need vastly different things. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails.